we're going to wait um, uh, a few more minutes to allow, and since we've got about four minutes before uh, 1030, and then um, we'll, we'll get started. But we're just going to wait for a few more minutes and allow others to, uh, to join us this morning. This is a beautiful day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Glad to be uh, among the land of the living. Hallelujah. We just thank the Lord. Good morning, Sister Marissa. Good morning, Sister Do uh, Pastor Lashura, Sister Dorothy. Good morning to all of you. Just welcome family and friends. Good morning, Sister Renee. So good to see you. I wish I could see all of your faces. Good morning, Sister Veronica. Good morning, Pastor Shani. Good morning, Brother Warren. Just a couple of more minutes, giving everyone a chance to come on. You want to be mindful of your time this morning. I think I came on a little early, but that's okay. Good morning, good morning. Mm -mm. Try the other one. The other one. Good morning, everyone. I guess that didn't help. Good morning, good morning. Well, <clears throat> good morning, Sister Diana. And good morning, Sister Barb. So nice to have you join us this morning. We are going to get, I'm going to get started. Good morning, uh, Living River family and friends. My name is Doris Hillman, and I have been given the task to speak with you this morning. And I'll, um, let us just start with a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and we praise you for this another day that you have allowed us to see. Father, we magnify your name this morning, for you are a good, good father, and we are most grateful to you. And Lord, I just pray that you would just word my mouth. Let the words that, that come out of my mouth, Lord, let them be received as words from you because that's what they are. Father, I thank you and I praise you that the word will, will encourage hearts this morning. In the name of Jesus, we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' mighty name. This morning, uh, our scripture is coming from uh, Isaiah 55 verses 10 through 11. You know, Isaiah was one of the uh, major prophets, and there are 66 chapters in Isaiah, as there are 66 books in the Bible. And as the book of Isaiah is very rich, and it, it has a lot of prophecies, and it, it points to the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So I'm going to read those scriptures, uh, Isaiah 55, verse 10 and 11 from the, New King, from the King James Version, excuse me. 
And it says, verse 10, For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goeth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void. And the Amplified um, defines void as without producing any effect and useless. But it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing I sent it. So first, what I want to do is um, I want to establish some background as to why we have the privilege to expect God's word to work in our lives. And then I want to look at some things that the word states that we should do. And finally, I want to look, I, want, I would like to conclude by encouraging us to stretch, to exercise our faith, and boldly walk in as we are and who we are through Jesus Christ, our high priest. So let's look at uh, the contrast and the effects of rain and snow and the word of God. Rain and snow is absorbed into the earth, and it provides moisture and vegetation to survive and grow and, and reproduce. Well, the word of God provides what we need for our spiritual growth. Each plant, I'm, I'm, I have my little chart here, I'm just going through. Each chart plants produces seed after its own characteristics. So by accepting Jesus, our identity in the body of Christ is established. Just as the seed has what it needs inside to become the plant after its design, so does a believer have the Holy Spirit to mirror Jesus. When you look in the mirror, who do you see? You see yourself. But when the world looks at us, who should they see? They should see Jesus. Not that you shouldn't see, your, see Jesus in you too, but I, there was a natural analogy there. But the world should see Jesus. And as we continue to saturate our hearts with the word, we will produce fruit and plant seeds to bring forth even more souls. And I want to, um, just to reiterate these, these passages, these verses from uh, the Passion Bible. And it says, verse 10, in the language of biblical metaphor, snow is a picture of mercy blanket blanketing the earth. Rain is a frequent symbol of revelation teaching that soaks the heart, which is uh, the soil, and makes us fruitful. Jesus is the seed of the woman. He's the living bread, the way of life that sprouts in us. He is the word that was sent as our apostle, as mentioned in Hebrews chapter 3, verse 1. And he will not return to heaven without accomplishing all God's pleasure. And verse 11, in the context, God's word is his promise to show love, compassion, and forgiveness to all who turn to him. Now, just as the seed is put into the earth, the word was put into an earthen vessel. He was put into Mary's womb to grow. Because you know that we were made out of, out of the, the dust of the earth. And then Jesus had to grow from a baby all through the stages of growth until he had to grow both physically and spiritually. And I say that because, well, he came as a baby, so he had to grow up. And, and like we have to grow up, if we do the analogy of even our physical and spiritual growth, we we start in the as a as an infant, naturally and 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 spiritually, and then we have to grow up. And it says Jesus learned obedience through the things that he suffered. That's what the word says. So in the beginning was the word in John one one, and the word became flesh, and his name is Jesus. Why did God send his word? Well. Just as the seed increases by increases itself by producing a plant to grow and increase, Jesus came to increase God's family through humanity. 
He came to bring us into the family of God. But before he could do that, before he could bring us to the Father, he had to die, paying the price for our sins, and be resurrected, giving us new life, his life. So when we know and accept, as we believe, who we are in relationship to, in connection, then we, know, we can know our boundaries and our privileges and our benefits. So that's why I'm going through this. And, it, and if it sounds um, like something that you already know, okay, maybe you do know, but are you living it? And this is to me as well. <clears throat> Remember that every seed has everything it ha in it to produce after its own kind. And Jesus is the seed that came from heaven in human form to produce after his kind, to show us, mankind, the Father God. So we can live like Jesus. He's our example. He came down to show us that. Now, what did God want to accomplish? He wanted to accomplish salvation for us and membership into his family. Because if Jesus hadn't come to give us that salvation, to provide salvation, we couldn't be memberships in, into his family because it had, that, that, we had, that had been lost um, uh, through Adam. And we know about Adam in the, in the Garden of Eden. But um, I'm going to read uh, 2 Corinthians 5.12. This verse, it says, For God made Christ who never sinned to be the offering for our sin so that we could be made right with God through Christ. And then Jesus came to conform us to his image. Remember I said what the seed does. The seed produces after its kind. So Jesus came to conform us into his image. And um, Romans 8.29 says, For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his Son, that he might be the firstborn of many brethren. So aren't you happy that you can call Jesus your brother and to have the creator of the universe as your father? I can say hallelujah to that. Now, um, in Colossians 3.10, it says, and we have put off, oh, wait a minute, I'm getting ahead of myself. I want to read, uh, yeah, I'm going to go on with Colossians 3.10. It says, and we put off the new self and being renewed in the knowledge and image of its creator, of our creator. Now, we are to, um, and Jesus also came so that we can represent, or I've heard it said, represent Christ. Colossians 3.17 says, and whatever you do, do it as a representative of the Lord, giving thanks through God the Father. Amen. And, um, and then we are, we are the Lord's ambassadors. In, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses, uh, verse 20, it says, So we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. And we speak for Christ when we plead to others to come back to God. So we were put here for that reason as well. Uh, we were, and then the second point is the Great Commission. You know that we know that Jesus gave his disciples the Great Commission. And you know it was also for us as well. He says that in Matthew um, 28, verse 18, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power in heaven and earth is given unto into his hands and then he told them to go and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy ghost and then he told them to observe all things whatsoever i have commanded you to do and he ended with lo i am with you always now let's look at some ways that we can take uh and when I say take, I mean to do, to perform, and execute. Let's look at some ways that we can execute God's word. We know that um, God does what he says, right? He says that in, 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 in these verses just I read, that I just read. 
Jesus said that our power in heaven and earth has been given unto him, and we are to, to uh, represent him, that he will never leave or forsake us. And how many times have we quoted scriptures? And you know we can quote things, but is it living in us? Do we really live what we say, or is it has it become truth to us? Let me give you an example. <clears throat> I have said a number of times, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And that's in um, <laughs> Philippians 4.13. But when the pastor called me and asked me to, to speak today, you know what I said to him? I can't do that. I said it. I surely did, just like a lot of you have said the same thing. I said I can't do that. And you know what? I even went so far as to give him some suggestions as to who he, he could call. But you know what he said to me? He asked me, did I hear myself? <laughs> and then he had the nerve to ask me, did I hear the sermon last Sunday? <laughs> Well, needless to say, I was reminded of the scripture that I said and been quoting for years, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And you know what? I can. I'm here today. I'm living proof. Now, <clears throat> even uh, the disciples were, were human too, and they, they questioned the things that they could do and couldn't do. If we look at Mark 4, and, and, and I'm not going to go through the whole, read all that, but it's Mark 4, verses 35 through 41. Jesus told his disciples to get in the boat and cross the lake to the other side. And you know what happened? A storm came, and they forgot what Jesus said, that they were going to the other side. They woke Jesus up and said, don't you care that we're drowning? They thought they were going to die. They forgot. And they didn't really, they had to, instead of taking him at his word, that they're going to the other side. Now, they have been living with Jesus. We've been living with Jesus. But we have got to take him at his word. And that's how I came up with the, the, the subject, taking God at his word, doing what he says, executing what he says. Um, <clears throat> when thoughts of fear come, and they will, we have to take those thoughts captive and present them in obedience unto the Lord. We cannot allow the thoughts to take us captive because if we do, it'll paralyze us. And it could cause us to lose sleep. It'll affect our physical health and our mental clarity. So we have to watch the words come out of our mouth because life and death is in the power of the tongue. And just as this word says, God's words does not return to him, boy. We just said we're created in Jesus' image. So like him, our words are powerful. Our words have some effect. And they don't return to us, boy, either. So we need to watch what comes out of our mouth. And we're going to go through some storms. We're going to have some roadblocks. We're going to have some troubles and some trials. And we're going to have some failed plans in life as believers. When we experience those things, does that mean that God is lost in the power? Absolutely not. Jesus came into this world knowing what he was going to suffer. But he came anyway because he loved us. And you may say, well, Doris, I'm not Jesus. I know you're not. Neither am I. But you know what? As believers, we have the same Holy Spirit in us. The same Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in us. And you can see that in Ephesians 1.20. And, and that verse is part of the same prayer that the pastor has told us. He's, he's encouraged us to pray every day. Write it down. Ephesians 1.17-20. through 20. Pray it every day. There is power in prayer. Okay, uh, and then I want to um, I want to read, uh, and I'm just uh, some verses that I've highlighted out of uh, Isaiah 43, 1 through 3. And um, 
uh, Brother Dan covered uh, some of this even last Sunday. But I'm going to read it like this. It says, Listen to the Lord who created you. The one who formed you says, Do not be afraid. You are mine. When you go through deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown, even though you may feel like you are. And when you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. For I am the Lord your God. The Lord loves us. So no matter what is going on in our lives, and we know that things are not going the way we thought they would go, but the Lord has not forsaken us. We can depend on him. He said that his word, he will perform everything that he says. Hey, can you find anything in God's word that he has not done? I can't. And he's not through because we're still here. Okay. There's a, I was reminded of a song and it says, I don't know the name of it, but it says, nobody told me that the road would be easy, but I don't believe that it brought me this far to leave me. You look back at how far the Lord has brought you. If you've been on this earth any length of time, you know God has been good to you. He may not have done everything the way you want it done, but he has been good to you. I'm going to give you an example. Part of my uh, life plan was to retire, leave Illinois, and go to Tennessee and live on a farm with my husband. My husband was a farmer at heart. He loved growing things. But you know what? He passed away. So when that happened, and he, and he died on my birthday. When that happened, you know what I said? I said, I'll never celebrate another birthday. Because in my mind at that point, of course, I'm grieving. And I'm thinking, okay, how am I going to celebrate my birthday? And my husband died on this day. So, you know, and this is me thinking um, naturally. But I could have got gotten stuck in grief and hurt and despair and then that would have led to depression and I could have gone down a spiral and you know what I I think I understand how people who've been married a long time especially people who older I, I understand how when one of them pass away and the other one pass away soon thereafter because they're still grieving their mate that was their, their soulmate but I said to myself, how could I dishonor the Lord by not acknowledging that he is still alive in me and that I need to show forth his praises and complete the plans for my life. So my life was not over and I had to keep on going. It wasn't easy, but I had to keep going. Did I cry? Many tears. Wondered if I was going to ever stop. But, and sometimes I still think about them and, and, and tear up. But that's, that's natural. We are human. We as believers and members of the body of Christ have to accept that our lives are in the Lord's hand. Even when things don't always go as we plan. We have been bought with the Christ, the precious blood of Jesus. And, and I had to praise my way through that pain and grief. And you have to do the same thing. So the word says in all things and in every situation, we give thanks to the Lord because he has not changed. And he says he'll never leave or forsake us. So our job is to trust him. So in closing, I encourage you to continue to draw closer to the Lord. Use your imagination and see yourself through the word as God sees you. Look in the mirror and confess what the word says about you. Pay attention to the things that you are allowing in your mind because you know the battlefield is in our mind. And we have to saturate our minds with the word. 
and we got to love on one another. We have to encourage each other, but we are truly not alone. And when you miss step and fall, get up and keep it moving. You know what it says in, in Romans 8, 12, it says, Now there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And because you belong to him, the power of the life-given spirit has freed you from the power of sin and death. You know, we have a tendency to beat ourselves up when we mess up. We need to stop that. We need to look to Jesus. He says, you, in, in um, John, I think it's John 1, 9, that if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us. If he loved us before he even saved us, of course he loves us after he saved us. Now we are his. So he loves us. And when your children mess up, do you beat them up? Of course not. You love them through. You might punish them because you, you got to do that. You got to correct them. But you still love them and you do it out of love. So we are going to go through some things. We're going to have some stresses. But you know what? We can, we can lean and depend on him. And then we need to contact one another. We can call on each other. Okay? And remember, there, um, our Zoom Bible class, I'm, I'm closing, I'm wrapping this up. Our Zoom Bible class is on Tuesdays at 7.30. I invite you to join us. You can express yourself. You can ask questions. We can learn together. So, and if you don't have the information for the, for the connection, inbox us. Let us know. We will be happy to send it to you. And Sister Belinda usually sends it. She sends it out every week. But if you don't have it and you want to join us, let us know. And if you're not near us, you can still join us. If you would like to join us, inbox me. And I'll be happy to give you that information. And let us remember also uh, to pay our tithes and our offerings. Information is at the bottom of the screen. And if you can't pay through, through that, then uh, inbox us and we will give you information as to how you can do that. Because remember that God loves a cheerful giver. And just because we are not in a, in, a, in a physical building, life still goes on. Offerings, tithes and offerings still goes on. And you don't want to miss your blessing. I love you. Thank you for, for, for joining us here today. And have a wonderful day. Because this is the day that the Lord has made. Rejoice and be glad in it. I miss you all. I love you, love you, love you. And join us for Zoom so I can see your wonderful, beautiful faces. I love you. Goodbye.